Two months ago, I left Miami, Florida to travel the world in search for a better quality of life. I watched so many YouTube videos and heard so many great things about Thailand and Southeast Asia, so I booked a one-way ticket to Bangkok to start my journey. After a 26-hour flight, I arrived in Bangkok as a first-time solo traveler, backpacker, and digital nomad. But soon after my arrival, I quickly discovered that Bangkok was not what I was expecting or hoping for. Uh, I discovered so many things that I wish I would have known before traveling across the world here. Uh, so in today's video, I want to share with you why I would never move to Bangkok, share with you a bunch of important things that I think you should know before coming here that for some reason other videos seem to be leaving out. And if you still plan on visiting, I have some tips and suggestions for you to help make the experience as best as possible. first thing you should know is Bangkok is hot and humid. Now I'm coming from Miami, but Miami has nothing on Bangkok. There's so many high rise buildings that there's just no airflow. So as soon as you walk outside, like as soon as you're outside, you need a shower. It's you're just drenched in sweat, which sucks because you want to go out and explore and, you know, like go to some temples, see the city. But as soon as you arrive to a temple, you're, you can literally just wring your shirt out with sweat. It's so hot, so humid all day, all night. I did a uh, visit in August and September, so it's the rainy season, which should make the weather more bearable because the rain should help to keep the temperature down. But it's still just unbearably hot and humid. Number two, that's your SIM card. So as soon as you get off the plane, you're gonna need to either go get a local SIM so you can get service, or you can download an eSIM and get uh, an international SIM card on your phone so you have data and you can use your phone. Um, however, what a lot of people don't tell you is if you're American, like me, um, most people don't have like their phones paid off. They, like with me, I had AT&T, so with the next plan, I just get the new iPhone whenever it comes out and you just pay like your 20 bucks or whatever it is per month but in order to use an international sim or an e-sim basically another sim outside of your american carrier your phone has to be paid off and i did not know that so it sucked to you know arrive here after you know the flight and the airbnb and then in order to use your phone you have to pay your phone off which for me was another like 600 bucks i had to drop as soon as i arrived in order to be able to use my cell phone or pay like ten dollars per day for international like roaming charges so number three bangkok and pretty much all of thailand is cash only no apple pay no debit no credit just cash uh and you also need to bring extra debit cards because um since Americans don't really use ATMs pretty much anymore, uh, I accidentally left my debit card in the machine, and so I'm down a debit card. But fortunately, I brought extras. But know that it's cash only, so you have to go to the ATM uh, to pull money out, um, and you are going to get dinged with the ATM fee along with the international ATM fee. So um, just know that. Cash only. Number four, you're gonna need to get a VPN. So when I got here, uh, there's a lot of streaming services that I like to use like Pandora for music and other ones that when you arrive here and you get your phone working, um, you don't have access to a lot of the American services that are, you, know, you know, the apps and streaming services, websites. So if the, for the first couple of weeks, you know, I was really sad that I couldn't watch and listen to what I wanted to. But if you download a VPN on your phone, then you can, you can just change the location so that it shows that you're back in America. Uh, and you can get a lot of VPNs for free. So just check the app store. Number five, Bangkok's red light district. So I watched a lot of videos and the videos that you watch, they, they tell you that, yeah, you know, when you go to Bangkok, there's these particular areas that you can go find that, um, that that's where the red light district is. You can have that experience if you want. But what the videos don't tell you is the red light district is everywhere. It's not just in Nana Plaza and Soy Cowboy, but literally just walking down the streets in the clubs, the massage parlors, the bars, just about everywhere you go, you'll find people that are 
for hire. <laughs> um, they're there to make eye contact with you, start up a conversation, and then you pay to take them home. So uh, the red light district is not just in designated areas that you go find. It's all over the place, everywhere you go, and it, it comes to you. Which, if that's what you're looking for, can be great, but if that's not what you're looking for, it can be a little overwhelming because you know it, it sucks to you know you try not to make eye contact with people because if you make eye contact with them like they think that you're interested in taking them home so um yeah the red light district is not just in nana and soy cowboy it is literally all over bangkok number six i watch a lot of videos and none of them tell you how repetitive Bangkok is. Don't get me wrong, it's a really big city and if you go up to like the highest point you can look around and see like high rises for as far as you can see in all directions. But it's all repetitive, like you can explore one block of town and in that, in that block you're going to have some nice high rises, you're going to have a temple, a night market, a bunch of food stalls, um, you know street vendors selling all different kinds of stuff and that's all fine and dandy but like once you explore that and you have that experience and you go explore the next block it's the exact same it's just more high rises another temple some more food stalls and night markets um, and then the same thing in the next block and the next block and the next block so it's it's cool to experience but it just gets really redundant and repetitive so <laughs> just be aware of that just know that it's basically the same in every block of the city that I that I was that I experienced number seven traffic and pollution the traffic and pollution in Bangkok are the worst traffic and pollution I have ever personally experienced um, and, and I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I don't really feel like any of them really tell you this um, when you walk through the city of Bangkok, um, you see a lot of people wearing um, masks and it's not for COVID, it's for the pollution. There's so many scooters and so many cars, there's so many people in all these, these high rises that when they move around, like there, there's just so many vehicles on the road and the traffic is horrible um, and the pollution is even worse. So you'll, you'll see a lot of people wearing masks for the pollution. All right, number eight uh, is that people are always selling you something. Um, you know, I, in a lot of videos that I watched, um, you know, they talk about how nice the Thai people are, which they really are. But in Bangkok, uh, everyone that, you know, approaches you, everyone that talks to you, everyone um, that basically speaks to you, um, including like taxi drivers, um, you know, they all have something to sell. Um, so it just kind of takes away from the experience because, you know, it's nice that, you know, they are friendly and they come up and they talk to you and they'll give you suggestions, but they'll probably also going to try and sell you a tour or a suit or some sort of experience. Um, like there's like everyone's basically kind of side hustling at the same time, which, um, I'm just not used to coming from like the Western, the Western world. Number nine smoking indoors is normal um, I was surprised I don't really recall seeing that in any of the videos um, about Bangkok but yeah you can it's kind of like the US was back in the day maybe like 30 years ago where smoking indoors was normal you can on the airplane of course but like in the city um, in the bars the restaurants the nightclubs I was just surprised to see people you know lighten up in the, in the club or at the bar so that's normal. Smoking cigarettes inside is A-OK -okay, um, if that's cool for you. Number 10. Um, I was really surprised. Well, I mean, I, I kind of heard about it, but I didn't expect to really, I don't know, I guess I forgot about it. But um, so it really wasn't something that I felt like was mentioned a whole lot um, if it was. But that's stray dogs. So um, pretty much... Um, everywhere I've been in Southeast Asia has stray dogs just kind of roaming around um, and they don't look good like they're not um, they don't look very healthy and I hear a lot of them aren't they have like rabies or something so if you're a dog lover um, you might not want to well just be aware that um, there's a lot of just stray dogs just roaming up and down the streets um, but it, I feel like you know the people feed them because they're they're alive um, but it's just not a good place to be a stray dog in a big city um, 
So, but you should know that because I was surprised when I saw that. Number 11. If you rent a scooter to drive around Bangkok or anywhere in Thailand, just know that when you rent the scooter, it's going to be empty. So, you know, like in America, if you rent a vehicle, they usually like fill up the tank or at least half a tank. Um, usually um, when you rent something in America. But here, if you rent a scooter, it's going to be on E. So as soon as you get a scooter, if you rent one, you got to turn it on, see what the gas level is. And then you got to go find um, like a gas. Well, they don't have gas stations. They have like these little um like booths on the side of the road like a little like little like shop on the side of the road that has like these bottles of petrol in it which is gas that's what they call it here um to fill up your scooter so just know if you do run a scooter in bangkok or anywhere in thailand mo the majority of the time it's going to be empty so you need to get gas as soon as you can because i've met a few people that rented scooters and didn't realize Obviously, it was empty when they got it, so they, after you know a bit of driving, they obviously ran out of gas. So you should know that. Number twelve. Pretty much the majority of all of the the food stalls um, are fried foods, um, which makes sense because it's fast. You know, fried foods are fast. But you know, one of the things I was excited about that I you know saw in a lot of YouTube videos <clears throat> were like how you know cool it is to go to the food markets or you know go to the food vendors and you can buy all this food and it's super cheap um, but it's I mean it is just a bunch of fried food um, pretty much everything is fried I mean from bananas to squid to an alligator uh, I mean you can get anything you can eat anything fried in Bangkok so I guess you know that's a plus um, but just know like it's not healthy at all so if you're at all like conscious about like your health um, and like what you're eating uh, you don't really have a whole lot of options when it comes to like the food markets and the food vendors um, but there are a lot of like vegetarian and vegan options throughout the city in fact they have a great option uh, they have they have a lot of options they're great in the amount of options that they have for food options that sounds crazy but there's a lot of options of what you can eat but you are going to pay more for it but as far as the street food goes it's just a bunch of fried meat um, and some some uh, some fruits and stuff yeah that's about it all right and the last thing that you should know <laughs> that isn't really mentioned in a lot of the other YouTube videos about Bangkok is tipping is not normal um, it's not part of their normal society and coming from America you know like where it is very much expected um, it's not like that here and I didn't realize that for the first week I didn't know I was obviously you know I was tipping everywhere with everything that I was doing for the most part because uh, when you coming from Miami like tipping is it's just included in everything except for like maybe McDonald's um, but yeah, so it's not normal here. Um, in fact, like in Chinatown, I bought a juice from a guy and you know, I ended up giving him like a bigger bill than what like it was. Um, and I walked away, you know, like, you know, leaving a tip. Um, and he chased, he ran after me to <laughs> give me my change. So, um, but yeah, it's not normal. I mean, obviously uh, if you go to a higher end like spot, catered to tourists like a rooftop bar or something they're just going to put the, the gratuity and the cert they call it a service charge and um tax and all that on there um, but that's just the high-end spots everywhere else you, you won't even see tax or anything on it it's just whatever the price is that's what the price is so you should know that because i don't feel like that was really mentioned a lot because i spent a lot of money in tips before my friend told me like hey that's not normal there so <laughs> there you go All right, so if you're still considering Bangkok as a digital nomad location for you, if you're backpacking around, um, again, I would not live in Bangkok. I would only pass through Bangkok. It's just a spot that when you're coming to the country, like this is where you're going to land, but after a couple of days, you're going to venture off somewhere else. Um, or if you really need something, if you're traveling around and you need new film for your camera or you need to go to an Apple store or something like that, you can find it in Bangkok. The malls in Bangkok are phenomenal. Everything that you would want in America, you can pretty much find in the malls in Bangkok. But again, you want to consider it more of like a landing pad. You just kind of pass through. All right, so as far as accommodation goes, um, I stayed in Airbnb. 
Uh, when I first arrived in Thailand, I booked a really nice high-end luxury, like rooftop pool, 50-story high-rise building in a popular area in like Sukhumvit near nightclubs and restaurants and bars and stuff like that I could walk to. Now in my head, I'm thinking like, you know, coming from Miami, living in a building like that in downtown Miami, thinking like, hey, you know, I'll meet so many cool people, like hanging out like at the, at the pool, I'll meet a bunch of people that are in the building and I can get recommendations on what to do and where to go and like where to go next. Um, but in reality, um, it was just a really nice empty building. I was like the only person in the building. I didn't meet anybody. The only people I saw were the people that worked in the building, like the receptionist and like the cleaning people and maintenance. Um, there was only like a couple of times I saw someone else get on or get on or off the elevator that was just staying in an Airbnb for the weekend. Um, so I would not recommend doing a Airbnb. Um, I would actually recommend that you stay in a hostel. So the first time I stayed in a hostel was while I've been traveling. Before this trip, I had only done Airbnb and hotel. Um, but in, here in Thailand, um, if you stay in a hostel, you're going to have a much better experience because as a digital nomad or a backpacker, you're going to want to probably talk to somebody, <laughs> right? Um, and it's great because you meet so many people that are literally doing the exact same thing that you're doing. Um, and it, you can have a great experience. I was really worried about it, you know, like sharing a room uh, with another person or people. And I've done it and it's really not that bad, actually. Uh, but you can also get a private room in a hostel as well. So you can still have your own space, kind of like a hotel, but still be in a like an open area. Like they have like pool tables and hammocks and you know um you know like a pool uh you know um they, they usually have restaurants and bars so pretty much all the modern um things that you would want in your accommodation you have that plus you're surrounded around fellow travelers so i highly recommend you stay in a hostel i stayed at mad monkey uh, bangkok and um there's also going to be a review of that coming soon on the channel and it was um that that's i would recommend you stay in a hostel all right so if you are in bangkok and you're traveling around you can use grab which is like uber or lyft there's a couple of other ride sharing uh, options you can um, use a taxi or a tuk tuk or you can take the sky train and i highly recommend the sky train uh, i was there for two weeks the first time and was intimidated because um, i didn't obviously read the language and um so i didn't take the sky train for like a week and a half so it wasn't until like my last few days that i finally figured out how to use the sky train and it's so fast it's air conditioned um, and it's cheap so if you're in bangkok like that would be the preferred method of travel it gets you over all the traffic gets you over all the pollution uh, and it's air conditioned so the sky train super cheap um, i recommend that as your number one choice of travel unless you're coming like from the airport then obviously you're gonna to wanna to get a grab. Just know traffic is gonna be insane. Recommendation for you guys is for when it's super hot and humid and you just can't bear to be outside while you're in Bangkok, <laughs> is to go to the malls. The malls really are like a safe haven. They're huge. You can spend an entire day in a mall. They're like seven stories. And they, anything that you can think of to like buy in a store, like they have it there. Anything that they have in America is gonna be in the malls there. And they even have like a like a, a whole like floor usually where they have like food stalls so you can get like street food at you know like a decent price while you're in the in the mall. So if you just need to get out of the heat and you you know you just don't want to be stuck in the the Airbnb hostel or hotel, like the malls are a great option for you to get out, see some cool stuff, and get just still have an activity to do with air conditioning. Before I go any further, I'm sure a lot of you guys out there think I'm just talking a bunch of trash about Thailand. And I'm not, just Bangkok. <laughs> no, but seriously though, you really do wanna get out of Bangkok as soon as you can so you can see some of the other amazing places that are out here in this country. Today I'm recording uh, to you guys from a place called Pai, Thailand, and this place is magical. There will be a review of this place coming to the channel soon, so stay posted for that. All right, now the last tip that I have for you guys, and it's also something that you really should know, is Apple Maps is absolute trash in Southeast Asia. Now in America, it's great. I use it for everything. I mean, it's the, it's the only tool that I use to navigate around America. But here in Southeast Asia, 
I think it's maybe because they don't really like use iPhones out here because they're so expensive. Um, so they use Google Maps. So you're going to want to download everything Google, Google Translate, Google Maps. And I mean, those are the two, <laughs> but um, Apple Maps is just completely trash for a lot of my Westerners that have iPhones like me. Um, Apple Maps, you're not going to use it. You should not use it. It does not really work. It just doesn't. One, it doesn't pull up any search results. And the navigation, a lot of times, is just not going to be correct. Uh, so you should absolutely know that. I hope you guys found this information useful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And join me as I travel around Southeast Asia and the world and search for a better place to call home.